Guys, here's a tool that I use all the time. It's called a psychrometric wheel calculator. This thing, uh, you can find psychrometric calculators online or as apps, but frankly, they do not do what this one does. And I'm gonna demonstrate this to you right now. So the idea here is that we've got two um, lines that we're reading. The inner line here is temperatures, and you see I've highlighted 70 and 75. This is wintertime temperature inside. This is uh, summertime temperature inside. We also have relative humidity on the outside. So 30% to 60% is considered the safe zone when you're talking about human health. If we go out you know, drier than 30% or wetter than 60%, we tend to have problems. So we're gonna use these uh, two things to compare to each other along with a couple other readouts that we've got on this. So let's start with like, let's just do wintertime. We're in the middle of a polar vortex right now. So I'm gonna slide 100% so that it lines up with 32 degrees. So you can see 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 100% relative humidity. If it is snowing outside and it's 100% relative humidity and you take that air and you just turn the entire tool now without sliding it up to 70, I brought that air from outside in and I warmed it up to 70. Now that same air is 25% relative humidity. So that is why we're gonna have dryness problems in the wintertime. What we might have to do is slide this thing to the left to humidify it. So we've taken this 70 degree air from 25% up to 30%. Now you can see here, we've got grains per pound. And when we slide this to the left, we are dehumidifying. And when we slide it to the right, we are humidifying. So that's an easy way to remember what we're doing as we start working with this thing. Um, now, when we take the 70 degree air, that's 30% relative humidity. One of the myths that people will say is that furnaces, forced air heating systems, will dry the house out. And you'll see what we do, we take this air that's 70 degrees and we warm it up and we're gonna blow it through the ductwork at between 40 to 70 per, uh, degrees higher. So 40 degrees is here, that's eight and a half percent. 70 degrees higher is over here, that's 140 degrees, that's less than 4% relative humidity. So it seems like it's drier, but look, we haven't changed the grains per pound at all. We're still at 33 grains per pound, same as we were at 7030. So the actual moisture content, the amount of moisture in the air hasn't changed at all. That's why when it then cools back down to 70, it's just as dry as it would have been. So a boiler system, hydronic heating does not make a home moister. It just doesn't take it through that warming up, cooling down cycle as far as the air goes. Now, when we look at uh, summertime, let's, let's start worrying about dew point, which is this other window that we've got here. You can see we, we do have Celsius on this one, but we're looking at Fahrenheit up here. So the dew point of the air that is 70 degrees, 30% relative humidity is 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, any surfaces colder than this will be wet because the, air, the water in the air will come out of it onto the surface. So when we're talking about summertime, we're talking about 75 degrees, and let's take the 75 degrees and make it 60% relative humidity. So right there. The dew point of this kind of air is about 60 degrees. Now, uh, and here you can see that again. The problem here is that if we were to take this 75 degree air and run it through the return and into an air conditioning coil, that coil, if we're using rules of thumb, which are not very good, but let's just use one because it's, it's hard to talk about every home in the world without using rules of thumb. If we cool this air down 20 degrees colder than it is, which is what a, an air conditioning coil will typically do in the neighborhood of, we're looking at 55 degrees. And that's a problem because now we're, we're outside of it, we're past 100%. So if the air inside the ducts cools the ducts to that same temperature, then we have a condensation surface inside the attic or the crawl space or wherever, whatever dumb place we put the ducts in. If we were to dehumidify this a little bit by sliding it over to the left and make that 75 degree air now 50% relative humidity, you can see that now I've cleared that 55 degree problem and 55 degrees is just almost at the dew point, but it's not actually past it. So that's why we like to dehumidify in the summertime. Now here's a weird example of something that you might wanna do. I had a client contact me about um, wanting to build a cheese cave in Colorado. And uh, what he wanted was for the air inside it to be 45 degrees and 80% relative humidity, but also ventilated because cheese, this blue cheese that he was making, 
off gases, ammonia, and all kinds of gross stuff that you just don't want. First of all, it's bad for the cheese, but also when you step in there to take care of the cheese that you're making, it's like it'll make you pass out. So what's interesting is that um, number one, it was in Colorado in the middle of a field, no trees, no shade. So trying to keep the air in the summertime to be cool in there, the 45 degrees, was very difficult. We ended up being about 95 degrees. On this particular day that we consulted, it was 95 degrees and 15% relative humidity. Okay, so what's magic about this is that in that climate, in the summertime, all we have to do to keep the humidity controlled is bring that air inside by twisting this entire thing, not sliding it. And when we get down to 45 degrees, we are magically at 80% relative humidity. So we don't have to dehumidify or humidify in the summertime if it follows that basic principle. If, if the air is always pretty dry in the summertime, which it is where, where he is. Uh, in the wintertime, it turns out that we have to uh, dehumidify a little bit because in the wintertime, we're looking at more like uh, 25 degrees um, typically and it'll be snowing and when we warm up here we have to make this moisture so we're gonna have to actually take this way up to there in order to get that there so this is where you can start to really plan what it is that you're doing with humidity is by using a tool like this and I think that this kind of a tool is just invaluable because you could easily just slide across being able to look at what this number means at this temperature and what it means at all other temperatures on the spectrum at the same time is invaluable. So I hope that you find this uh, tool useful and if you uh, find the means to get one online, I might even be printing these at some point because like I swear, <laughs> hardly anybody makes these anymore. I don't know why. But uh, please do comment below if you have other things that you use this psychrometric calculator for. Uh, questions also, feel free to, to reach out. I address those personally. If you want to join our Patreon, uh, group, then that's at patreon.com slash home diagnosis TV. We talk about weird stuff and we nerd out um, with our patrons every two weeks. So I hope that you have a, a happy winter um, <laughs> ice age that we're, that we're all going through and happy holidays and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.